Hi, everyone, and welcome to Around the Product Development, our weekly show where we, in 25 minutes, feature lively discussions on hot topics about digital product creation. We talk about anything from monetization to innovation, and we cover it all in just 25 minutes. There's no fluff, just actionable insights from digital product practitioners who are also members of the Agile Product Builders community. And about that community, the Agile Product Builders community, or APBC, is a Slack community powered by Boulder, who are digital product creators and consultants. And this week, we have a very special guest. It's Olivia Halupchok, if I say his name correctly, um, who will talk to us about how to kickstart your first AI-based product in 30 minutes. I know it sounds very short, but we're going to get all to it. And Olivier is an AI engineer. He has a background in regular engineering, if I can say so. I'm not sure if anything is regular about it. Um, and maybe interesting to know, Olivier is Polish, but he has a French first name. And he has lived in France as well. But these two things are not related to each other, as I have learned from him very recently. Welcome, Olivier. Hello, everyone. Uh, and thank you for the short introduction. Sure. Uh, great to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, yeah, as I said before, maybe you're an AI engineer, right? And I think it's something that, well, not all the kids are dreaming of, but maybe some of the kids are dreaming of, and maybe some of the audience want to know how do you become an AI engineer. Um, maybe you can share a little bit about yourself, where you come from, um, your studies, professional background, so we kind of know what steps does one need to take to become an AI, AI engineer at some point. Sure. Yeah. So as you said, I have been uh, a, a software engineer at first, and it was I, I was interested in software engineering a long time and software development. So I my first job was the, being a front end developer. So I have developed uh, many many applications, and uh, it was it was some time ago before I started my studies. So I don't have any, uh, any background uh, related with AI yet, uh, but uh, I, was, I was really long uh, searching for studies related with AI. So I wanted even to apply for studies in uh, Netherlands and so on. Uh, but then I started studies in, in Poland where I come from, uh, from the Silesia region. And now I'm living in Warsaw and studying IT, uh, their computer science. So I'm at the first, uh, first grade of, uh, of uh, IT computer science studies. And this is my background. Okay, very, very cool. And then last question, right? I mentioned before you have a French name, but you are not French, right? But you have lived in France. So I'm curious about that. Where did you live and why did you live there for studies? Uh, no, it was uh, family, uh, family reasons, I think. And yeah, it was a kind of, I think, a uh, surprise for me as well. I have a French name because my parents left France uh, okay. when I was born, and then somehow I uh, I've landed in, in France uh, thirteen years uh, later. So that's my story about France. Yeah, maybe it was meant to be, right? With a name like that, you have to end up in France somehow. Probably it was like uh, how it should have been. Yeah, I I think so. The, the, and living in Champagne, it was kind of uh, excellent experience for me. Yeah, sounds like a great idea as well. Hey, so let's go back to the topic. We're talking about AI solutions, right? And, um, and AI-based products and how to kickstart them. And then in 30 minutes. So I think there's quite a lot packing in our talk today. Um, maybe just to get started, like um, I know that you have built or there is a AI assistant that Boulder uses. Um, which enables it basically, right? This this very, very quick uh, building of AI products. Maybe you can share a little bit about it. Like how, what is it actually? How does it work? Is it even possible to build a product in 30 minutes? We'll get to that later, but maybe you can start sharing for someone who's not familiar with the technology, what does the AI assistant actually do that we are talking about it? Like, how does it work? Sure. So, 
Uh, there are a million ways how you can incorporate your own AI assistant. Uh, mm -hmm. And we have prepared the technology for that, uh, which I, I will mention later. But uh, there are a lot of ways that you can incorporate uh, incorporate AI in your fields of business. Uh, I have even uh, thought about uh, is there is there any business field that cannot incorporate AI? And I came to a conclusion that in every field of business there is something re that that recurs uh, regularly and. Uh, so there is always a chance to, uh, to automate it. Mm -hmm. And so I think there is always a field of business that you can uh, incorporate AI and uh, you can do it, uh, you can do an AI assistant that will help your users in e-commerce, that will help your users in some finance uh, technology and so on. So, and we in Boulder have prepared a special library, which is open source, that can uh, can quick start your uh, AI development for your product. So, as a as a very like let's say um, person not knowing what we're talking about, if I have to build an AI assistant from scratch, it's a lot more work. If I use an AI or like if I use your AI assistant to build kind of something on it, it saves a lot of time and work. Is that correct, kind of? Yeah, it is, uh, especially if you have, for example, no experience in AI, uh, then we have prepared a manual that step by step guides you through the whole uh, bootstrapping and uh, quick starting your AI uh, assistant. And we have also prepared some kind of template. Uh, mm -hmm. You have only to clone it, uh, and then you just can start your first AI assistant without prior background in AI. No, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so talking about the Boulder AI assistant, right? I understand there's an AI assistant. It helps me save time, and I guess money as well because time is money. What can I make with it, or what can I achieve with it? Like, are we for me, it's very hard to somehow see what kind of product can I build with it, right? Are we talking about very simple things? Are we talking about complex things? Like what is even, maybe just what's possible with it? Yeah, uh, sure. So uh, you've mentioned this complex and simple thing. So uh, I think I will start from the simplest thing. So mm -hmm. like it can be your customer service. Every, uh, every field of business has its customer service. Uh, operators and I think this is the best way to to automate that because you you can of course uh, hire your uh, mm -hmm. customer service agents 24 hours a day but uh, it's quite expensive so you can automate that with AI assistance you can uh, take some additional features uh, and add it to your product using uh, AI assistance as well as uh, uh, so it can it uh, this technology can uh, automate the offer preparation for your customers. Uh, it can provide some uh, data automatically uh, without further assistance from uh, from any of your employees, for example. Yeah, and then maybe if we go to the second part of our title right we say it's possible in 30 minutes but my question would be to be honest it sounds well it sounds very interesting right to make something in 30 minutes but how far does one get in 30 minutes are we talking about a very simple solution or is it really really possible to make something more complex in 30 minutes already sure so uh it's uh, great to mention that we have uh we have already tested that with uh, our uh, non AI related uh, developer last week, and it took him uh, last. Uh, it it took him thirty minutes to run his own first AI agent, AI assistant, mm. and it was of, of course it's, it was something uh, simple, uh, but it took all the 
knowledge and many familiarity of many tools uh, that was was needed for building that AI assistant without our Boulder AI, uh, Boulder Open AI assistant. Uh, so uh, he he managed to to deploy to release his own assistant in 30 minutes for his own personal purposes, and uh, we are kind proud of uh, of that. And um, after you release. Uh, your assistant in 30 minutes, you can sure uh, develop it further uh, and add uh, another functionalities and uh, push it to the to the limits and so on. But uh, the 30 minutes is uh, is enough to just to make the first uh, version of, of AI assistant for your product. So, so 30 minutes to get started, basically to have something at least you can develop on but not 30 minutes for a fully beautiful working product yet, right? It's a very MVP, I think. Yes, um, of course, if you are experienced with this, uh, with this library, you yeah, you can, you can do a lot much better uh, when you are experienced. We have even set uh, a record uh, that we went from idea to a full uh, MVP, uh, or rather proof of concept, POC as we call it, mm -hmm. uh, in 70 minutes. So it is our record that uh, it was, we were able to show the AI custom tailored for our customer in just 17 minutes. And uh, this, I think this, uh, this shows how much you can achieve with this piece of technology. Yeah. So in 30 minutes, you could have built two products almost, right? At least proof of concepts. Yeah, 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 exactly. Super fast. Yeah. And then maybe my, my follow-up question, right? Because we're talking about a developer, a developer with experience. You do need a developer still, right? It's not possible for um, someone who doesn't have any development skills to use the Boulder AI assistant to build something, right? So you need a developer at least. And then I think preferred is an AI developer if you want to do it a bit better and faster. Or how is that? Yeah, that's uh, that's really crucial to know that you have to uh, you have uh, to take advantage of JS developer to mm -hmm. because our our technology is written in JS. Uh, JS is JavaScript, right? Yeah, JavaScript, uh, or uh, we can uh, even uh, take a step further and call it TypeScript, uh, as this is a subset of uh, of JavaScript. Uh, oh. So we wrote it in uh, a library to JavaScript library, but uh, and this why is that? Because we wanted to make every web developer and JavaScript is of course uh, web web development language to be able to make his own AI assistant. And a lot of companies have uh, their AI, uh, JavaScript developers. So we wanted to share the technology with everyone. And uh, that's how you can, uh, that's how you can incorporate your AI assistant. And I would like to mention that it, you don't, need especially a front-end developer or back-end developer. You just need JS developer as front-end and back-end uh, can be provided out of the box with our library. That's, that's what I wanted to ask as a second question, right? So any developer basically who knows JavaScript will be fine in this case, right? There's no speciality that's extra needed. Anyone will be able to handle something. Yes, yes. We our main goal was to basically to let all of the concerns uh, take it from the developer and just to make him focused on what the AI has to do and what are his tasks and what mm -hmm. are his tools. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. everything that uh, a developer that wants to run his first AI assistant uh, define and 
and it works. It just works. All right, and then a question I think many people have about AI in general, but maybe especially if there's an AI assistant that helps you build products, how uh, how safe is it actually? How secure is it? Because I assume you might use this AI assistant, but there's many more, right? So it's not only this in this case. Um, so let's make the question a bit broader. You might use them for, com for well, company related things. It's private information sometimes. Maybe it has user data involved, I can imagine. You mentioned earlier, if it's your customer support agent, kind of, it interacts with customers as well. It, customers might have data, email addresses, date of birth, whatever else. Um, is it safe to use it and how safe is it to use? Oh, that's a great question. Actually, it's it's rather safe. I think it's it's very safe as this in, in this takes advantage of open AI services because mm -hmm. this is uh this is a well known service uh right now nowadays and uh it's safe as open AI is a great uh enterprise that that has to uh, care about privacy and safety of the data that it was provided by uh, many companies from all over the world. So we are not concerned about data safety, but there is also an even safer option for everyone that needs it, which is uh, OpenAI has also in the same piece of uh, a piece of technology, a library included Azure, uh, Microsoft mm -hmm. Azure services, which are even better for enterprises who are the most concerned about the data, the customer data and so on. So it is even simpler uh, to switch from uh, open AI to Azure uh, with uh, using the same package, using the our package. Mm -hmm. You mentioned open AI, uh, right? The company behind ChatGPT. Um, people will know, well, I think if people know AI, they might know ChatGPT, they might know open AI, Sam Altman right behind it. Um, how how does the Boulder Assistant, how is it different from if I would just use ChatGPT? Are there any benefits or from other AI assistants or how does that work? So basically our goal was to simplify all the infrastructure and all the basic things you have to do while using uh, open AI library. Uh, mm -hmm. This is powered by open AI ChatGPT, of course, but when you would like to create your own project, project including open AI, you would have you would have to take dozens of steps uh, to do the basic things, and mm -hmm. it can be challenging. Uh, and I think uh, that can be a friction point for for many users of uh, of open AI libraries and piece of technology. So we mm -hmm. just wanted to make it simpler for, for everyone who would like to have its own AI, open AI uh, assistant uh, and to show it, show him how the project uh, should look like to uh, make it uh, better for, for the beginning. And this is uh, what our uh, library does. Let's say I'm a business owner. Um, I have a business, I have products, right? Let's say I'm in an e-commerce business. Um, I think it's a good example, right? There's examples to use it. What are the next steps that I take actually? I, I, I need to find a developer probably. Is there something before the time I can already do myself? Or is there something I can get started with? Or is it the first step to find the developer and then move on from there? Sure. Uh, there is one thing that developer needs to have is, uh, and this is what the uh, AI has to do. Uh, for example, for e-commerce, it can be, um, like I said, customer service. 
-hmm. So I have to I have to define the tone of AI. Uh, how, how should our AI assistant sound like? Uh, what should be his attitude toward the the end user? Uh, what should his tools look like? Because our AI assistant can be uh, can can use many tools. Like he can. Uh, get the list of products out of our database. It can it, it can take advantage of uh, of uh, user analytics and so on. So it can be super powered with with these tools. And we have to uh, we have to have a plan for for this uh, because uh, our JS developer has to. Has to define that in in code. Yeah, there is a case, um, an e-commerce case. I think that you've worked on as well with Traffic Family, right? I'm not sure if if you are familiar. Well, I think you do, right? Um, can you quickly just share? I think it's a nice example because I think it's still difficult for people to understand what can I do with AI or not. Maybe you can just briefly share how it can help. For example, in this case, it's an e-commerce business, but maybe you can just share what it does actually. Because if you imagine that, right, I probably it didn't work in half an hour, but still, even if it takes a few hours to build something, um, I think it's an interesting case. Sure. Uh, yes. Yeah, so that was a really interesting case as uh, the processing of 60, 70,000 product uh, cost was like, I don't know, 30 or 40 dollars per month. Uh, right. So that was pretty amazing uh, result, I think. Uh, and what we did with using AI was we wanted to show the user the value of each product on our uh, on e-commerce website, e-commerce platform, and we wanted to. To make him tell apart these two products, what are the disadvantages and what are advantages of each one? So we just uh, we just generated the three pros and one con of each product for every product for sixty thousand products, and it was first of all it was super fast. And secondly, it was really cheap as it took like 30 so or 40 dollars. Yeah. Compared to getting a text writer, right? Because like if you have to write 70,000 product descriptions by a text editor, that was the case, I think, right? Yeah. In the on if you if you look for freelancer that would would do that, yeah. it was like one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So yeah. yeah, because it's money. Time, but also opportunity cost, right? You lose time, so you don't have a product in between, actually. Sure, yeah, that's right. And okay. uh, we can even do that. Uh, every time you add new product, you can you can take advantage of that the description generation as well. So, so it's another advantage. OK. Um, I think we're almost at the time, so I want to ask you two more short things. How do people get in touch with you or with this AI assistant? What do they need to do? And then maybe if people want to know more about the subject, where do you find your information? Where can they find the information? Sure. So, um, so uh, let me answer the first question. Uh, you can always reach me out uh, with my LinkedIn profile or with mm -hmm. uh, with uh, my uh, email address, but uh, respond to both. And uh, the second question, uh, you can always gather more information about our OpenAI assistant through our blog, through uh, NPM JS, which uh, if you are a JS developer, you uh, you must know. Uh, and if you are not, then this is a library provider for for the whole language. Uh, so uh, you can check our AI package from with GitHub a service, and there is a whole 
readme and manual specified uh, for uh, for our library. And uh, do not hesitate to reach us if you have uh, further questions because we are uh, really eager to help you if you have any concerns about uh, our SDK. Perfect, amazing. And we're gonna share your details with the audience later so they will have it or they can find something in the resources as well. So Olivier, thank you so much for our lovely talk. Um, I'm not sure how you feel, but I feel like I need to have an AI assistant as well at some point or start building something. Um, I'm while I'm quite interested, I'm still late to the game, and I think many people feel like this. So maybe this is a good time to get started, actually. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I, I think that this is the, a surprise, but you can still be ahead of many of these people that started uh, started AI products lately, as this is a really uh disruptive technology and it emerges so quickly that you can still be ahead of of them and to take a big steps into uh out uh, outperforming your uh your rivals i think your yeah, yeah your competition. competitors yeah 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 exactly all right thank you so much Olivier. one more time it was amazing joining you um, for the audience, I'm very excited to see you next week. And we have another talk lined up in this, well, in this familiar theme, I think, where I will learn a bit more. I'm going to talk next week about how to increase your website traffic with AI tools. A very relevant topic to many of you. What does SEO mean in this time? How does Google still rank? Do we still need Google after all at some point? Um, valid questions, I think. And we're going to talk to Wojciech Urban, who is a specialist, um, has his own company as well. Um, working in that field. So I'm very excited to have him next week as a guest about AI, 3 p.m. CET, um, like always, and you find the sign up link in the resources as well. Olivier, thank you once more for your time. It was amazing talking to you and have a great day, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.